Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. Thanks for joining me in the next video in the Do More with Click Tips and Tricks Edition series. In the last video, I showed you how to use Direct Query with Microsoft Azure SQL. And in this video, I'm going to talk about our OpenAI Analytics Connector for Click Cloud Analytics. Before we continue, please be sure to visit the Click Learning Portal at learning.click.com for all your personalized and structured learning needs of what Click has to offer. Here you can select from both free and subscription-based content, instructor-led training, skills assessments, and robust video tutorials. Check out the video tour on the main page to get started. Okay, so let me just jump right in and then I'll backtrack on the particulars. So in this particular instance, we have a ClickSense app and I have a image and text object, which actually is referencing the open AI connector to produce the generative insights. And I will show you how all that is set up, but basically I'm passing a parameter or a field value for platform and for product. So if I just select, let's say Rob the robot, it selects NES, it actually passes my prompt over to OpenAI, produces that result in real time, and then feeds it back directly to my text and image object. Okay, so there's two parts of our OpenAI analytics connector. Part one is the connector can be referenced as part of a chart object with some simple script that's put in an expression, for example, in a measure or dimension. And then the other part is, is you could also call it as part of the data load to load those insights into a table that could then be linked with click data as part of the data model. Okay. So let's just call this video part one, where I'm just going to show you how to reference it as part of an expression within a chart object. Okay. So I'm going to walk you through all the individual steps. There is a couple of disclaimers. When you create the analytics connector for OpenAI, you need to have a OpenAI platform account and you can sign up for this at platform.openai.com. So just note that this account is completely different from the chat GPT account that OpenAI offers and there's billing involved and tokens and so forth. So the relationship is really between you and OpenAI. You're just gonna set up the API key within our connector and then we're basically just going to facilitate using the APIs to return the results to Click Cloud. Okay, so just so we're clear on that. Please note there's information on the models being used and an API reference that you can also review. I'll include the links where this video is posted as well. I'm not going to get into too much detail on this. I'm just going to show you how the initial setup is done for this first part. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're going to go into the data load editor and I'm going to create a new connection. And you'll notice you have a section called analytic sources and then the connector OpenAI. I'm going to select that connector. Now I'm going to paste in the OpenAI API key. Now understand this is a key that you set up and that you use and has a number of tokens and credits attached to it. I'm not going to get into detail on that, but once you have that key available, you can paste it right in there and you can choose the configuration and there's three configurations that work. This first one called GPT-3 rows basically sends each row of data as a question to the completions API in small batches to improve performance. And each response will be stored as text in the table with the same number of rows as the input. Okay. So this configuration can be used both in the load script or chart expressions. Now the next one, which is called GPT-3 JSON tables, this configuration will send a request on each row where the response is expected to be a JSON list of data. And the connector will convert the JSON table into a table of data into the click data model. And then finally, you have the completions API GPT-3.5. This configuration is similar to the first one. Uh, it'll send each row as a request to the OpenAI chat completions API. In this case, the requests are made with a user message role and each row of data from Click is sent as a different request. So for this, I'm just going to use the first one. Now you'll notice there are open API models and there are specifics for these models. Again, I mentioned those in the reference up here. I'm not going to go into that because it'll just take more time. 
temperature max tokens. For max tokens, this is the number of tokens that you want it to use to generate the response. So the more tokens you use, the more robust the response will be, depending on what is sent. So for example, if you're trying to retrieve about a paragraph of information and you only have 16 tokens, the response might be truncated. For now, in this part, I'm just going to use about 100 tokens. When I show you part two, when we generate the table, there's actually a response that comes back that shows you how many tokens were used to generate the response. Okay, the rest of this stuff I'm going to keep default for now. A um, couple things to keep in mind. When you click test connection, it doesn't actually test the connection out to OpenAI. This is just validating that the mandatory boxes are filled. Okay, this is very similar to the other analytics connectors at this time. So just keep that in mind. So if you have a problem in your API, you'll get an error when you load the data or when you execute the request. Uh, user and association field, we'll save that for part two. Um, the name of the connector, I'm just going to call this open AI video to give it a unique name. If you edit the connector and you go to make some changes, such as changing the token values, and then you resave it, please note there's probably about a five minute um, caching time. So you won't see those changes take place until the cache refreshes uh, on the server. So what I do is I just use a new name each time if I'm doing my testing and I want to play with something and I don't feel like waiting for um, the refresh. So now I'm just going to click create. So at this point here, we're not going to select data because I'm going to save that for part two, because all we're going to do is reference this um, open AI video name. So what I'm going to do actually, just to make things easier, I'm just going to put in gibberish right now, which is really not important. I just want to insert the script for the data load for the data model, just to show you the endpoint that's generated here. And you'll notice there's this connection name, retro game boys, open AI video. We're going to reference this within the expression. Okay. So I'm just showing you that because I'm going to be changing that so you know where it comes from. But for this time and for this example, we don't need anything loaded within the data load script. We just need to create the connection and then reference the uh, expression parameters. Okay, so now that we got that connection created, let's clear everything here. Clear my selections. Okay. So I'm just going to delete this and start over so you can see what's going to happen. So I'm just going to go to charts and I'm going to grab a text and image object. I'm going to put it in here and then I'm going to add a measure and I'm going to add an expression. Now the expression that I'm going to add is basically my prompt and the connector information to basically kick off that um, request. Okay, so the expression that I'm going to put in here is also going to check to see if anything is selected. So just using standard click script, I'm just checking the selection count of a field for my filter, in this case title. And it's saying if title is basically not selected, don't do anything. It's just going to return, please select a product to see a suggestion on your investment. However, if a title is selected, it's then going to run this expression, endpoints.script agar string which basically has the connection information, the prompt, and the results where it's going to be returned. Now, if you remember when we set up that connection, I called it Retro Game Boys Open AI Video. So that's a parameter that just goes right here inside this particular area. So connection name, Retro Game Boys Open AI Video. The column it's going to return is choices.txt. And the prompt is basically anything that you want it to be, but here I'm getting consumer sentiment, what are people saying in regards to, and then I'm concatenating the selected title name along with the selected platform name. That way we're giving it a little bit more context. Okay, so I click apply and you can see since nothing is selected, we get the prompt, please select a product to see a suggestion on your investment. Go into analysis mode and let's do something real time here. Let's select the, uh, Neo Geo AES, and let's choose the Neo Geo console. And now you can see this chart object, this processing, and now it's going to return a result based off of the prompt for Neo Geo AES and the platform. And there you go. 
The Neo Geo system has been praised for its excellent graphics, controls, and programming. People have blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read everything here, but you get the point. Okay, so that is creating that generative AI insight or suggestion from the open AI APIs using the open AI analytics connector within Click Cloud Analytics. Now there's more you can do with this and I'll continue this um, with some multiple parts, if you will, just to show you some other um, examples. But I think this one is a great example to just see how you can pass that one row in real time, passing clicks, uh, information that's in the data model over to that API and getting that result back based off of the custom prompt. Now think about it, you can put in variables, you can put in real time questions, all that other stuff, um, performing the steps I just showed you. Um, actually, I'd love to hear from you on how you think you would use this. It would be great. Um, put that in the comments below. All right, guys, I'll see you on part two where I'm going to touch on the loading of the API results into the data model. Take care.